discussion and I think we close this one and move on to the next talk, uh, I'm, which is going to be yeah. Stefania Freska. And I'm, yeah. hi, here you are. Yes. Here you are. I try to share my slide. The, I see very well your slide. I hear you well. Okay, can you see? <laughs> yes, I can. The full screen is light. <laughs> yeah, I think that everybody can see. I see no complaints in the chat. So I think we can just start with your talk. Mrs. Fresca, please start. Thanks. So um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I am Stefania Fresca and uh, I am a postdoctoral researcher at MOX, Politecnico di Milano. The work I'm going to present uh, regards uh, deep learning based uh, reduce order models uh, for the solution of time dependent parameterized PDEs. And it's in collaboration with uh, Andrea Manzoni and uh, also from MOX. So let's say that um, we are interested um, in solving a full order model expressed as a parameterized dynamical system, which may arise, for example, from the semi-discretization of PDEs, uh, such as the monodomain equations, which describes uh, the electrical activity of the heart, that is, the propagation of the electrical signal through the heart. The problem is that uh, solving the form in two contexts, um, real time and multi query applications, uh, entails a prohibitive computational cost uh, when the dimension of the form is large. Reduced order modeling aims at replacing the form by a model showing a much lower complexity, but still able to express the physical features of the problem under investigation. The most used approach to Rome is the linear one, but it results to be ill-suited when dealing with problems featuring coherent structures propagating over time, such as wave or front propagations, uh, linear transport or convention dominated problems. Moreover, it is ill-suited when dealing with problems characterized by a solution manifold showing low regular regularity with respect to the parameters of the problem. Motivated by this, we did move to nonlinear reduced order modeling. POD Galerkin ROMs are an example of linear ROMs, and they are built starting from snapshots taken from a set of form solutions obtained, for example, by means of the finite element method. The main building blocks of a POD Galerkin ROM are POD, that is a proper orthogonal decomposition dimensionality reduction, which allows to obtain the, the basis for the linear trial manifold. The Galerkin projection through which the ROM equations are obtained and hyper reduction techniques used to deal with terms depending nonlinearly on either the solution or the parameters. Starting from the setting of linear projection based methods, we generalize to the nonlinear case. In particular, we propose a new class of non intrusive, non linear reduced order models based on deep learning algorithms, which we call DL ROMs. Then, in order to enhance the performance of DL ROMs, we propose a second strategy, POD DL ROM, which um, combines uh, the best features of deep learning algorithms and POD dimensionality reduction. These two techniques uh, have been applied to a very broad range of examples, uh, such as cardiac electrophysiology, which was uh, the main field uh, 
we're motivating us uh, at the beginning in the development of such techniques. Uh, but then, but uh, after that, we, due to the fact that the techniques we developed uh, are proved to be very general, we applied also to ADR problems, uh, mechanics problems, uh, fluid dynamics problems, as I will show you in the following. So the goal of reduced order modeling is the efficient approximation of the parameter solution map. A linear ROM looks for an approximation of the form solution expressed as linear combination of basis functions. The solution manifold is approximated by means of a n-dimensional linear trial manifold defined in terms of the matrix V where un are the ROM intrinsic coordinates. The function mapping the low dimensional intrinsic coordinates into the high dimensional ROM approximation is here linear. And the reduced dynamics is described by means of a nonlinear parameterized dynamical system of dimension n obtained by projecting the form residual onto the linear trial manifold. A nonlinear ROM instead looks for an approximation of the form solution defined in terms of a nonlinear function CH, which plays the role of the previous matrix V, but in a nonlinear fashion. The solution manifold is approximated by means of a n dimensional nonlinear trial manifold expressed in terms of such nonlinear function. The map from the low dimensional intrinsic coordinates to the high dimensional ROM approximation is nonlinear. And the reduced dynamics is described by means of another nonlinear function, which um, directly models uh, the relationship between the parameters and the intrinsic coordinates. This relationship was instead intrinsic to the ROM equations in the case of a linear ROM. As I said, POD Galerkin ROMs are an example of linear ROMs. Um, in this case, the matrix V is uh, computed by means of proper orthogonal decomposition. Then the matrix P consisting in a DOF selection uh, through a suitable hyperreduction strategy is uh, computed, thus allowing a testing time to assemble the operators appearing into the ROM equations without relying on I-dimensional structures. Then the Galerkin projection, the assembly and the solution of the ROM are performed. POD Galerkin ROMs show several limitations when dealing with the coherent structures propagating over time, such as cardiac electrophysiology, for example. Indeed, the linear superimposition of modes results in a very high dimensional linear trial manifold in order to get an acceptable accuracy. Moreover, evaluating the ROM requires to solve a dynamical system which might be unstable unless the time step size is very small. Finally, the ROM must account for the dynamics of all the field variables, even if the interest is only in one or part of them. These limitations compromise the efficiency of POD Galerkin ROMs, and in order to overcome them, we move to nonlinear reduced order modeling and propose the DL ROM. A DL ROM looks an approximation looks for an approximation defined in terms of the decoder function of a convolutional autoencoder neural network. To describe the reduced dynamics onto the nonlinear trial manifold, we rely on a deep feed forward neural network. And finally, in order to get higher accuracies confirmed by a numerical test, we also employ the encoder function of the convolutional autoencoder. So a DL-ROM learns at the same time both the nonlinear trial manifold and the reduced dynamics by setting its dimension as close as possible to the number of parameters of the problem, that is the intrinsic dimension of the problem. The architecture of the DL-ROM employed at training time is the one reported in the slide. It consists of three main blocks, a, B, and C. 
The FUN solution enters block A, the encoder function, and it provides as output a low dimensional representation of the form. The same parameter instance associated to the form enters block B, the DFNN, and it returns the, intrins the intrinsic coordinates. In this way, the error between the two low dimensional vectors is accumulated. Then the intrinsic coordinates enter block C, the decoder function, and it provides as output the RAM approximation. In this way, the reconstruction error between the form and the DLROM solution is computed. Regarding instead the testing phase, the actual architecture is the one into the red box, that is a testing time we discard the encoder function. The first test case I want to show is the 2D figure of eight reentry solution of the monodomain equation coupled with the Aleph Pamphilo ionic model and discretized by means of P1 finite elements. In this case, uh, the parameter is the y coordinate of the second applied stimulus. Um, indeed, we employ the S1 S2 protocol in order to induce the reentry, which can be seen as the cellular mechanism undergoing uh, cardiac arrhythmias uh, such as atrial tachycardia. The comparison between the form and the dl -ROM solution for a testing parameter instance is the one reported here, where we start from a form dimension almost equal to 70,000, and we are able to end up with a reduced dimension equal to two, that is equal to the intrinsic dimension of the problem. The maximum relative error here is about 10 to the power of minus five. If we look at this picture when, where we reported the trend of the relative error indicator over the testing set versus the CPU time at testing time, it's clear that the DLROM outperforms POD Galerkin ROMs both in accuracy and efficiency. Then we increase the complexity of the problem by considering both re-entry and non-re-entry dynamics. This was achieved by simply enlarging the dimension of the parameter space. For the same level of accuracy, the DLRAM technique enables faster testing times. Indeed, by setting its dimension to five, in contrast to the maximum dimension of a local POD Galerkin ROM equal to 619, we are able to gain a speed up almost equal to 35. Then we performed an error analysis where the error has the definition in the slide by fixing a testing parameter instance and by looking at the distribution of the error over time, which is almost uniform, and the maximum error is associated to the first time instances, which are the most different over the parameter space. So, now I would like to highlight the benefits introduced by the use of a DL-ROM. Its dimension can be kept extremely small, very close or even equal to the intrinsic dimension of the problem. It can be queried at any time instant without requiring the solution of a dynamical system until that time. Indeed, if we are interested in computing the RAM approximation at testing time at final time, the ideal RAM speed ups are almost equal to 607,000 with respect to the POD Galerkin RAM and the form. The time resolution required uh, is usually larger with respect to the one employed in the numerical solution of dynamical systems. Um, it avoids to use expensive hyper-reduction techniques uh, to deal with terms depending non-linearly on either the solution or the parameters, um, and it doesn't require to account for the dynamics of all the field variables. The drawback is that uh, the DLROM technique depends on NH, and this may lead to long training computational times so when the form dimension is large. 
I want to highlight that uh, the high training times are always uh, justified by the efficiency introduced at testing time. But um, in order to overcome this critical issue, we extended the DLROM to the POD enhanced version. That is, now the goal is to approximate the intrinsic coordinates we transposed U, and the per example loss function becomes the one into the slide. So starting from the form solution, the intrinsic coordinates are computed and the POD DL ROM provides as output an approximation of them. Then the ROM solution is recovered by means of the matrix V. In particular, using a randomized SVD entails more efficient computational times with respect to the use of the exact one. So the POD diagram technique makes the training phase extremely fast, thanks to a prior dimensionality reduction achieved by means of RSVD, and thanks to a suitable multi-fidelity pre-training. Pre-training is a form of transfer learning consisting in training a model to solve a simple task and use the optimal weights and biases found on the simpler task to initialize the network on a more complex task. So we tested the, the POD diagram approach on a benchmark related to cardiac electrophysiology, where we are interested in analyzing and studying the variability of the solution with respect to the longitudinal and transversal conductivities to the fibrous direction. We started from a form dimension almost equal to 4,000. We performed the first level of dimensionality reduction by means of RSVD, and we end up with a reduced dimension equal to 3. In the, in the slide, we compare the form and the POD diagram solutions for a testing parameter instance at two different time instances in order to highlight the variability of the solution. Both the DL-based ROM techniques are able to provide very efficient testing computational times. Moreover, the use of the POD enhanced version drastically decreases the total time. With total time, I mean training plus validation time. Then we analyze the use of pre-training in two scenarios. The first one consists in increasing the form dimension. Starting from 4,000, we increase the dimension to 65,000 almost. And the use of pre-training enables us to decrease the total time from 42 minutes to 12. The second scenario we studied instead regards uh, the parameter space. Indeed, we enlarge the dimension of the parameter space, and again, the use of pre-training decreases the total time. We investigate the use of pre-training also on the 3D elastodynamics equations, uh, where the parameters are the Young modulus and the Poisson ratio. Here we employ the optimal parameters found on the red task to initialize the network on a new configuration where we modify the parameter space. We move from the San Venan Kirchhoff constitutive law to the Neukian one. Now the external time force is time dependent. First, it was constant and we enlarge the dimension of the time interval. Here, I would like to highlight two aspects. The first one is that by means of pre-training, we are able to decrease the total time of a factor four. The second is that uh, the testing time, and with testing time, I refer to the time needed to compute NT. In this case, NT is equal to 90 time instances for a testing parameter instance is on the scale of milliseconds. In contrast to the physical duration of the phenomenon, which, are, which is on the scale of seconds. Um, that is, we are able to provide results even faster than real time solutions. Then, coming back to cardiac EP, we consider realistic geometries, in particular, a realistic geometry for the left ventricle and a realistic geometry of left atrium.
The parameter here is the longitudinal conductivity. And uh, by focusing on, uh, for a moment, on the Alvites case, um, a local POD Galerkin ROM, a traditional POD Galerkin ROM with four clusters, needs 28 hours in order to be trained. Instead, the P it's possible to train the POD ideal ROM in less than an hour. Both on the LV and the LA, we are able at testing time to achieve real time solutions. The construction of a POD diagram can be extended in a straightforward way to problems involving more than one field variables, such as the approximation of both the velocity and pressure fields in the Navistokes equations, or the solution of a coupled fluid structure interaction problem. POD Galerkin ROM show limitations also in this setting. One has again to treat efficiently nonlinearities. All the field variables must be approximated. ROM stability must be ensured by enriching the reduced basis spaces. And one has to impose the coupling constraints, which obviously increases the dimension of the problem. These limitations are solved by means of a POD DL ROM by treating as independent the different field variables. Indeed, by exploiting an analogy with RGB images in image processing, starting from the snapshots of the different field variables, which may have different dimensions, the intrinsic coordinates are computed and they are stuck together, thus forming a tensor, which represents the actual input and output of the PUD DL ROM neural network. This approach doesn't entail main changes in the network and in the number of parameters of the network. Indeed, only the first layer of the encoder function and the last layer of the decoder function are responsible for the handling of the different input channels. We tested this approach on the 2D Navistox equations, uh, where we consider a fluid in a pipe with a circular obstacle. The parabolic inflow profile is the one reported in the slide, where the parameter is the amplitude of the sinus function. Here, we are interested in reconstructing both the velocity and pressure fields. So we started from this form dimension. We perform the first dimensionality reduction for each input channel. And then we end up with a reduced dimension equal to 5. In the slide, we compare the form and POD DLROM velocity magnitudes and pressure. And I would like to highlight also the, the ability of the POD diagram solution in replacing the form solution when computing outputs of, of interest, such as the drag and lift coefficients or the flow rate. In particular, POD diagram is able to capture the oscillating behavior related to vortex shedding. Then we focused on the fluid structure interaction between an elastic beam attached to a fixed rigid body and an incompressible laminar flow. This was done by solving the incompressible Navistox equations in ALE form coupled with the nonlinear elastodynamics equations. The parameters here are related to the beam material properties and obviously the dependence of the displacement field on such parameters reflect on the velocity field. Here we were interested in reconstructing only the velocity and the displacement fields, not the pressure field. So in the result obtained are the ones in the slide where we consider two testing parameter instances at the same time instance in order to highlight the uh, variability of the solution over the parameter space and the ability of the POD DL ROM in capturing such variability. Regarding times, the testing computational times achieved by the neural network allows us to gain a speed up with respect to the form computational time equal to 10 to the power of five. 
Finally, we show the numerical results obtained for the blood flow in a cerebral aneurysm. Here, the parameter dependent inlet flow rate profile is the one provided in the slide, which is obtained by interpolating by means of radial basis functions a base profile and by treating two of the interpolated values as parameters. The maximum relative error on the velocity magnitude is about 10 to the power of minus five, amount of minus four. And the technique proposed is able to reconstruct the flow recirculation and the blood stasis into the bulge. To train uh, this example, uh, we needed uh, two hours and a half. Um, and regarding the testing computational time, it's possible uh, to predict uh, 850 time instances uh, for a testing parameter instance in less than 0 0.3 seconds. So concluding uh, the technique I show you today, today enable to solve nonlinear time dependent parametrized PDEs in real time for any new parameter dependent scenarios. They also allow to perform long time extrapolation, that is to predict the solution ahead in time with respect to the time interval observed during the training phase. And if you are interested in such feature, I would suggest to attend to follow the talk of Andrea Manzoni scheduled for Friday 19. So, Generating nonlinear ROMs by means of DL algorithms is indeed a feasible way to overcome the usual bottlenecks experienced by traditional linear ROMs. A POD DL ROM approximation retains all the features which allow all the features of the DL ROM, which enables extremely efficient testing computational times. The extra layer performing a prior dimensionality reduction and the use of a multi-fidelity pre-training enables to drastically decrease the training computational times. So these two techniques can be considered as turnkey ROM techniques for application of interest, which makes um, ROM generation and solution fast, non-intrusive and reliable. I summarized the publication related to the presentation uh, I gave today. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mrs. Fresca, for your interesting talks with many interesting, complicated PDE models to which, for which neural networks make a contribution. The talk is open for discussion and questions. I see not yet any questions in the chat. Here is one. Mr. Schwartz, please. Hello? We don't hear you. Yes? Grüß Gott. Hello? We don't hear you. You need to unmute yourself, maybe. Do we, am I the only one who does not hear Mr. No, I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing him. Okay. You hear me now? Uh, now it's come. Okay. I have an external mic, so I had to change. So thank you. It was a, a very nice talk, very interesting talk. Uh, I have a question. Um, this extreme reduction, which you now uh, even uh, push more uh, with the neural network component, uh, so you have an extremely reduced model. Uh, you showed us the pictures which look very uh, optically similar to the high fidelity uh, simulation. Um, but of course, we would like to know uh, when we have trained the network uh, uh, in one set of examples, uh, then we use it for slightly different uh, uh, applications. Can you uh, estimate the a posteriori uh, way the error of the network for the new examples which were not in the training? Um, let's say that 
uh, we are working on something similar to try to quantify ge the generalization error of the neural network. But uh, to be honest, uh, we don't have uh, any re results yet. From a theoretical point of view, if you are interested, uh, there is uh, the work of uh, Nicola Rares Franco, which was uh, a bit more, let's say, analytical. Uh, and but for now, we he was uh, able uh, to find uh, an estimation uh, on the maximum di reduced dimension. Let's say it's not uh, error, an error estimate. Oh, sorry, my slide are gone away. But you saw uh, we it finds an estimation on the number of on the bottleneck. Uh, of the autoencoder. This is, this is, let's say that for now, it's uh, the only strong theoretical results we have in our hands. Okay, thank you very much. You're yeah. welcome. Are there other questions? I need, see no questions in the chat. So I have one question, maybe. Hello, so I, I've got quite a, a general question. You, you have a, a non-union system. Let's let's look at the one where you've got flow past the cylinder with vorticity generated. Um, and you have a non-linear system approximating that. So when I think of a non-linear system, I immediately think of transitions such as bifurcations. So my question is, will your non-linear redu reduced model have similar bifurcations? Sorry, I can't hear you very well. Uh, I, I'm so you, have non, you have a non-linear Reduced order model yeah. of a nonlinear system. Yeah. Um, nonlinear problems have bifurcations. 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 Yeah, so till now, um, let's say um, we try something similar on uh, MEMS microelectromechanical systems uh, where there are regions in which uh, the solution is no more unique. Uh, Hmm. Okay, and uh, so we developed an approach in order to recover the uniqueness uh, at the data level before going uh, before the, the data were fed to being fed to the neural network. It's obviously if I have a parameter instance uh, which is associated uh, to more than one solution. <laughs> Then, then the neural network is not able to learn. Thank you very much. I have a question concerning the, I think, monodomain equation, as you had it. Um, the monodomain equation consists of a reaction diffusion coupled with ODEs. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I simply didn't get it. Uh, so you are you, you're using the PDE. And yeah. then what happens to the ODE? Nothing. Let's because say that. Uh, yeah? What? Please go ahead. I'm sorry. The information regarding uh, the ionic model, uh, that yeah. is the model at the cellular level, uh, is intrinsic uh, to the PDE solution. Okay, we saw, we see the effect of the cellular model at the macroscopic level. Indeed, if you use, for example, different ionic models, uh, it reflects uh, on different AP, action potential, if yes. you see. And uh, the neural network uh, is completely able to learn uh, this difference uh, simply by getting uh, the solution at the PDE level. Okay. And then following up on the monodomain, you, of course you have the wavefronts, right? So from a gut feeling, what makes neural network structure able, what enables neural network structure to, to, to follow uh, the wavefronts? I mean, I can understand it on the, on the, if I look at the iconal equation, I can, I can see the wavefronts, right? But how you can are see they, them? Sorry, you can what see. What makes the neural net? What enables neural network structure to accurately follow mm -hmm. wavefronts? Uh, let's say that uh, at this point, the neural network uh, is simply learning uh, by, 
let's say, likelihood is trying to, um, let's say, minimize the mismatch between the data we are providing and the solution. Maybe for if you want to see some kind of uh, more, um, um, let's say, intrusive in, in, in information regarding the physics and so the front propagation, we have, we have to insert, for example, uh, some physics law, and this is something we are working on at the moment. But let's say the power of this neural network is effectively this when you use a linear model like POD Galerkin Rom, it's very, very tricky in to reconstruct this steep front. You need a lot of basis function. And a linear approach is able to recover it. Okay. Thank you very much. There is a note from Mr. Schwab concerning a recent results on the method for bif on this method for bifurcating systems. Okay. I, I think there are no more questions, comments, neither in the chat, nor by raising hands. So thank you very much again for You're welcome. Talk, for the discussion, Mrs. Fresca. Thank you. That closes the session. Bye-bye, everyone, for the moment.